Welcome to the Porsche Club Insider, your one stop for all things Porsche and PCA. Here's your host, Vu Gwynn, and the Insider Crew. Hello there, and welcome to episode 23. I'm here with Manny Albin, our technical director, and Rob Sass, Panorama editor. Damon Lowney, unfortunately, is not here with us. He is at home getting better and making sure that he'll be all well before our big trip to Monterey next week. Robert At least Forsyth, not infectious. <laughs> that too. Uh, Robert Forsyth is behind the scenes making sure all this works. Thank you, Robert. And um, before we start, I want to thank Finn Fishy and Matt on the Water, who uh, are probably listening to us while sitting in traffic. I know Matt's probably sitting in traffic in his lifted diesel Cayenne. How cool is that? So thank you for dropping us a note. We certainly appreciate it. And the five stars was pretty cool. Um, what's going on? Well, you know, the Cayenne just reminded me. And we talked about this yesterday, but you're going to be getting your panoramas in the mail. And there was a mistake. <laughs> I was not quoted as saying that that the Cayennes do not excite me, except for Cayenne S's. That was uh, uh, Manny uh, does not hate Cayenne. No. <laughs> and Robert, I mean Rob, didn't mean. To. <laughs> it's all good. Shit. Somehow a block of replacement only copy wound up in the in the final issue it's and that's good. on me it's you know, all it's good the editor that's it happens that's how all many, on me how many words are in each issue and you happen to you know one sentence a lot <laughs> a lot but still it I, for, I forgot about that uh when he asked, when he asked us for quotes so i was just reading the whole the panel because we get advanced copies so i'm reading it you know from the front to the back and i get to the cayenne thing and that's when i saw it i'm like oh my god they used the uh, filler quote not the real quote so, uh, yeah. But just, I have to say, though. Um, and, and we totally doxed you. <laughs> <laughs> Your address in Bel Air is there. So all the irate Cayenne owners know where to go. That reminded me of what you said about the drives of lift it. Uh, I love I love Cayennes. I love Cayenne diesels. I think they were yes, probably their best yes. uh, Cayenne, in my opinion, uh, that they built. And unfortunately, the whole diesel thing ended that. But uh, If you listen to the recent uh, water-cooled exhaust video, I think... Uh, one of the last ones that I recorded was a lifted Cayenne with muffler delete. And he just did straight pipes after the secondary cats, straight pipes down the center back. And it sounded awesome. Man, he's just sensitive, too, because he's the only one sitting at this table who's never actually, I don't, you've never owned a Cayenne, have you? No, and honestly, I probably won't. Um, That's not helping you. <laughs> <laughs> no, mainly because my commute is uh, 48 miles each way. Yeah. Oh. And the 15 the, mpg. And, and in the quote I gave, in the quote I gave you, I said that uh, you know with the current price of gas and the fact that Cayennes aren't known for their uh, frugality, their gas mileage, except yeah. for the hybrid and diesel. Um, plus, uh, you know, E1 Cayennes are getting older, so just sort of like with any other car that's getting older, there's maintenance items and. Uh, he spent uh, a lot of you spent a lot of time behind the wheel of my Cayenne. Oh so no, I, I, I love uh, driving wise. It's great. It's so I have I own a suburban, and for what I needed, uh, it was fits perfect. A suburban is literally like driving an iceberg with a uh, steering wheel. <laughs> it has no <laughs> straight line. Awesome uh, cornering and stuff. Yes, no, it's not something you're going to think. Cayenne, on the other hand, you can tow with. You can do everything with. But, but with three kids. And uh, having to pack stuff, the Suburban was much better suited than the Cayenne. So uh, it's not on my list of cars I would love to own just because there's so many other stuff that... Uh, it doesn't fit your lifestyle. No. no. <laughs> but my wife would love to have a Cayenne or a Macan. Mm -hmm. yeah, that would fit her lifestyle very well. But anyways, uh, that just reminded me. Yeah. And thank you for the five-star review. Yes. I saw them. Thank you, Finn Fishy and Matt on the Water. Uh, so we are... Actually, next week is going to be a busy week, but you guys have something cool coming up this Friday, which I'm a, a bit jealous. But since I haven't been home very much lately, I thought it would be uh, wise to stick around this weekend. Uh, you want to share with our listeners what you're doing on Friday? Yeah, kind of a last minute thing. Um, Porsche runs a press fleet out of suburban Detroit in Troy, Michigan, and they just happen to have a GT3 and a GT3 Touring. So we're going to go so out. Jealous, so yeah, jealous. Yeah, we're going to try them both. So you get them all to yourselves, like without any other journalists around. Like you get the cars to yourself. Yeah, for for a day. Ah, <sighs> nice. We have the photographer, and we're doing videos too. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, cool. Can't wait to see the footage on that. 
Yeah. The logistics are going to be fun. I'm driving from here in Maryland to Michigan where I'm picking up Manny and Damon. Who are Although flying. you're picking up Manny because Damon uh, farted around oh, yeah. getting Didn't... his flights. And so oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's getting on a different flight. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of which, you traveling home, uh, you're traveling home in a different vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sass has, has acquired another vehicle, not of uh, the port with a Porsche badge, but another but wagon. A, nonetheless, a common badge or a Munich, Munich, car. Munich, Munich badge car. Now you got rid of the Mini. How long did the Mini last? It was a failed experiment. Let's face <laughs> it. <laughs> it's wonderful, Vu. It's six speed. It's, it's all wheel hey, drive. Look, it, it's a great it car. It was great in the winter, but it was a terminally unreliable car. I mean, I, you you know, a, a seven year old car with seventy thousand miles on it should not break on a road trip with your kids and your dog in it. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Right. It, you know, when that happens, you know, I don't care what the car is. Even, it is dead to me. How often does that even happen anymore where a car leaves you on the roadside? When was the last time you saw a car other than like say for a flat tire just broken on the side of the road? You don't travel ninety five as much as I do. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Waze usually tells me when there's somebody broken down on the side. So yeah, no, I it was it was dead to me after that. I literally got on the Carvana website. Yeah, when they some, bought it. When something for like what that happens, two years ago. even if it's like a one time deal, you kind of lose faith in the car, right? Yeah, you never yeah, know when it's going to happen again. Exactly. And, and that just gives him an excuse. The to key, buy a new I car. think, is the miles on some cars, mm. uh, like minis. Mm-hmm. I love minis. You know, my son had a uh, O2 yeah. mini, uh, and I and I followed uh, this group called Mini Takes the States. Mm. It's uh, sponsored by Mini, and they every two years they do this thing where they go around the U.S. And uh, this year, I thought it was very interesting. Granted, they had a couple thousand cars, but oh my God, the breakdowns I would read about. Really? They even had, they even had their own support crew to their credit. Wow. That would come and you know help stranded cars, but uh, I don't think Mini's reliability is. It can't be that high. Right. And people think because it's uh, BMW owned, oh, it's Sherman owned, but their engines for the longest time uh, were not BMW engines. They were other manufacturers. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they had yeah. different variants. They had like normally aspirated turbos and then supercharged. Supercharge, and yeah. you really have to do your homework to get the right one. Um, but because it's also tied with BMW, like repairs on those cars can get owners upside down pretty quickly i think your car needed like a transmission or something and it and was one hundred and ten thousand miles and it lost second gear and uh you had to buy the whole transmission and the labor alone was worth it was going to cost more than what the car was worth there so there you go upside down so i, I that car you know had over, a little over a hundred thousand miles um i bought my 964 with 107,000 miles and i've driven it to florida multiple times and has 165,000 miles now and I wouldn't think twice about getting in and right now and driving down to Florida. Um, your I C2, just, your second C2 has 100, how many? 165. Wow. You're yeah. driving a lot. Yeah. Well, at this point, you know, I would not have taken a 2014 Mini with 70 some thousand miles on it, 200 miles. I That's mean, crazy. Well, I mean, you know what happened earlier on a on a different trip? The, the plastic valve cover absolutely just fractured and basically sent you know all of my oil you know shooting out at at 70 psi or whatever all over everything and that was not the breakdown or that was no that was that was breakdown number one this was breakdown number two (laughs) the car just went into limp mode in a in a fast food drive-through restaurant you know on a hot you know like a hundred degree day in in the middle of illinois with my dog and my two kids in the car so that was it all right let that be a lesson to you all that are listening so yeah. his replacement vehicle is approved by by Nathan. Yeah. Right, Nathan? Ethan, Ethan. Ethan. I'm sorry, Ethan. Oh, Ethan, yeah. Ethan the dog. Ethan the, the Ethan Greyhound. The Greyhound. Ethan yeah. The Greyhound. Yeah, Ethan finds the uh, the back of the E91 wagon to be much rude. I see all the uh, lick marks on the back window. <laughs> <laughs> that would drive me crazy. There's nothing to be done about that. <laughs> all right, so we got a lot to go through. Um, you guys get back from that cool trip. And the following week, we are heading to Monterey as uh, many enthusiasts uh, in the world are going to be there. And there's a lot to do, but there's some awesome cars that are going to be there. Um, So do we want to go through the cars that we want to have our eyes on? Yeah, so I guess this was based on an article that uh, Rob wrote uh, last week. What was it, the week before? Maybe last week. About uh, cars to watch. Once he picked, they were interesting 
because uh, Monterey is, uh, of course, very well known for its auctions and also uh, it's the bellwether for how the uh, economy is doing and how market pricing. So people are going to pay a lot of attention to uh, what goes on. But Rob told me an interesting statistic. Why don't you uh, – about how much uh, is sell-through or how much are, they're, they're going to be bringing – how many people are unloading cars versus last year? Oh, it's not how many people are unloading cars. It's just the uh, the spike in in cars consigned that yeah, have, yeah pre-sale yeah. estimates of over a million dollars. Typically, it's around 90 cars. This year, it's almost 150 cars that have pre-sale estimates over $1 million. So, oh, that so, many cars with yeah. that high a value. Yeah. I, I told, he he yeah, told me this. That's I was crazy. saying, uh, you know, all I hear right now is uh, you hear the recession talk. And I read about uh, how these big uh, corporations like McDonald's and Walmart, even Google and Facebook are announcing, you know, freeze hiring freezes and pretty much getting you ready for the layoffs. Yeah. The word uh, layoffs. And, uh, you know, more and more saying that everyone's cutting back. They're buying more um, house brands, the same name brands, and that's going to affect the economy a- as a whole. So, will that aff- obviously, it's got to affect uh, pricing and, and these type of cars. So, the fact that uh, so many people, more people are selling their cars. Right. Nothing yes. goes on forever. I mean, everybody knows that the, the market's been on a tear, you know, for at least, you know, the last two years, you know, all through the pandemic and, and beyond. And I don't think anybody's predicting a bloodbath, you know, a situation where uh, the sell-through rate goes from, you know, traditionally 65, you know, 68 percent, uh, you know, in the 40s or th- something like that. Nobody is is looking for that to happen. But... You know, I think the consensus might be that the market is already is, is peaked and what you've got are a lot of people who are trying to get out before that memo widely circulates hmm. and, uh, you know, sort of get out as near the peak of the market as they can. So the last time this sort of thing happened was 2014, 2015. You know, 2014 was kind of the peak of the last, uh, you know, big active market. And 2015, you know, the air started to come out a little bit. 16, 17, you know, gradually a little bit more air came out of the market. But, I mean, I don't think it was, anyone's expecting a crash here. Yeah, I, I don't think so either. And I think the factor that we haven't talked about yet is, you know, there might be a lot of people that want to buy cars still, but inventory is still so incredibly tight. Like, if you wanted to buy a new whatever, 911, 718, whatever, allocations are still super tight and i think for 2023 production numbers are expected to be low so if you want to buy a car you want a cool car i mean this is your no your inventory routes. issues here you know something like 13 or 1400 cars at the big Monterey buy here pay here a lot. right exactly so, you can go yeah. see them and if you want it you pay up yeah i mean yeah exactly so let's talk about this first car here um which i think is a color that you know, on any car sells. I mean, really, Mexico blue, if you have an opportunity to buy anything and and, and in this hue, it's such a gorgeous color. And um, I think this car also belongs. This is the Arrow Kit, too. Arrow Kit, 997. The Lobster Claws, which I can, mm, eh, not my favorite, a little bit busy, but everything else about it is beautiful. Uh, I believe this car was owned by the late Rudy, Mancinas? Yeah, yeah, Mr. Nine Nine Three. And I was that's, gonna say, I was gonna say he's more known for Nine Nine Three, right? But and that's he's, honestly, but he's also known for Jelly Bean kind of colors. Yeah, that's why I picked this car because that and the presale estimate, which is ninety to one hundred and ten thousand dollars for what is a Nine Nine Seven Dot One, you know, with thirty some odd thousand miles on it. I, I mean, think this it is not that. a car that would be showing up at a you know at any catalog sale, Gooding sale, or or, or any of the other big time sales. I think this car will do that all day long. I think so too, but um, especially it, because of the color. I think if yeah. that was silver or black, mm, probably not. Yeah, I but mean, it's a it's a nine nine seven with a factory aero kit, relatively low miles in a great you don't painted see sample many color. Aero kit nine nine sevens, correct? Or correct. PTS nine nine sevens for that matter. Correct. This will do ninety to hundred all day long. Right, right. But you know, chose it because it's interesting. Plus. You know, we've we've sort of had this conversation before. The nine nine seven is kind of the we look at it as sort of the the, the Goldilocks of the the water cooled cars right now. I mean, it is kind of like the nine nine three of of water cooled nine elevens. And I think Rudy didn't he have sort of like a a thing where he would do the car, if I'm not mistaken, like 
he does Rudif- like painting rudified uh, yeah rudified exactly exactly where he would uh do painted seat backs and he he you know do little touches tasteful touches and i think this car will do real well that's yeah. a, that's a gorgeous car. i think so too but it's you know it's going to be kind of an interesting thing a 997.1s that does six figures Aero kits, gorgeous. Yeah. I love Aero kit cars. All right, next one we have is a Club Sport, I believe, in like a very interesting color. I think that's kind of a love it or hate it color. Like I, green is my favorite color, but I'm not. What so color sure. is it? That's Linden green, and uh, one of our buddies, uh, John D'Angelo, I think, is in love with this color. Um, it's quite unique. It's almost like that. Um, what was that color that the the Caymans? Peridot. Peridot. It's like yeah. Peridot. Yeah, 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 it looks yeah. like Peridot. Well, this is an interesting car because uh, there wasn't many Club Sports sold. Mm-hmm. And most of them were white, right? Yes, Maybe? white yeah. or black. Yeah. Um, and so this one, <clears throat> this would be hard for a person to be able to tell it's a Club Sport, except the fact that lack, lacking sunroof would be a, mm. the first telltale sign. There's a, We have someone in the region in the Baltimore area who owns one. And I saw it at a Cars and Coffee mm-hmm. <clears throat> before I knew I met him. What caught my attention was uh, he had the CS on the fender. I believe this car does have that decal on the fender. I, don't, I just don't think you can see it in this photo. Yeah, I on, thought I read where it's on, it didn't it's on the have, left side. It, okay. Yeah, you can see it right there. Yeah, that's the only thing that uh, told me that uh, either this guy made a tribute or it was a real uh, club sport. But they don't really stand out. Oh, maybe it doesn't. I was going to well, say, I thought I read in the description oh, that it, it didn't have deleted. the deleted. Okay. It was deleted, yeah. Um, to the untrained eye, they might walk right by this car. What color do you see it as, Manny? Because uh, like for those champagne. of you that don't know, he's colorblind. <laughs> so to us, that is a green. But to you, that's does that look tan? Champagne colored. Champagne like yellowish. Color? Yeah. Um, I've never seen a club sport in that color before. Not say your. Well, this one's paint like. to sample. Yeah, it's a yeah. rest of the world car. Yeah. You can see the side reflector on it. But mm-hmm. uh, it was a PTS car, so I mean, it's it's rare upon rare. It's a club wow. sport. It was a car that didn't have a huge horsepower bump. It had like a basically a different chip, I think, than the uh, stock one, and that's what hurt it in the U.S. in sales because it just didn't justify uh, the jump. What's the, the estimate on that two. car, Rob? It is four hundred to five hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Which honestly, I haven't seen a three-two Carrera Club Sport sell publicly anywhere in a long time. So, you know, I think four to five hundred. Yeah. There's... A lot I of options. When they were like a hundred thousand, and I thought you got yeah. me crazy. <laughs> wow. I mean, but if you want something rare, that is about as rare as you. Yeah. Get. That's almost a very uh, someone who. This is a uh, like I said, it's not a car that people are going to recognize right away. It's not like an RS or uh, it's a very subtle car to understand what a club sport is. Yeah, no, most people it looks like you've got a you know a. A paint to sample three two Carrera or three two Carrera in an unusual color. No one would put a four hundred five hundred. The, the normal person would never right. put a four hundred to five hundred right. thousand. And it depends what kind car. of options it has, because obviously the le- some options are desirable, some are not. Like uh, power windows are not desirable on the, on the. Uh, I wouldn't think on a club sport because you want to go lightweight. Mm-hmm. The suspension uh, options, the uh, limited slip options, that's all options you want. You know, performance related. So. Mm. Uh, this next one uh, actually was talking with my buddy locally who has a lot of cars, but he does not have a 928. And this black GTS is quite the looker. That's this one is car. actually not black. It's, it's, oh, it's a, a dark midnight blue. blue I think. Yeah, yeah it's with, midnight blue. Even yeah, better. Yeah. Oh, and it's got like I don't know, like sixteen thousand miles on it. Wow, that's the one. To buy. So this is the one to buy if you want a museum quality example of you know the last and and arguably greatest. You know, of the transaxle cars, I mean, this is this is it. What's uh, this one estimating at? Two fifty to two seventy-five. I saw that. Like, that is eye popping. I mean, that is probably going to be world record money for any nine twenty-eight. I would assume. I, I don't. Well, I can't remember seeing no, because any because you have to factor in risky business. So, uh, all right, other, any other, non-risky <laughs> business nine twenty-eight. And what's, the, what's a, the miles yeah. on it? Sixteen thousand. So it's not really um, collectors. I think would want sub. 5,000 mile? 16,000 is uh Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's like not a, that's freakishly... That's like a 24-year-old gymnast. <laughs> it's not competitive anymore. <laughs> Manny. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least you don't have to worry about throwing a dollar bill out the window with every click of the odometer. It, it's 16,000 miles. Gorgeous. You could 
you know, you could put 10,000 miles in the car and, and not. Isn't it true, though, that um, you have to be very obviously very careful with a music, museum piece like this, but especially the rear quarters, I heard, like parts for this car is hard to come oh, by. I can't this imagine. Is, this is very unique. It's not, for this fenders car. are not similar yeah. to a standard no. G, uh, 928 and other things. Um, but, man, look at how beautiful that car is. That yeah. is, the, the I guess, the swan song final i, I yeah. would love to see how the 928 community thinks of of this because i've always heard that the gt is actually more desirable from a driver's point of view i know the gts is the best because it's the last it's the yeah. highest horsepower but talking to some people from porsche i was surprised when they said uh the one you want to look for is a gt yeah which was a oh. 90 maybe 91 under yeah maybe yeah 90. i mean it's the middle car between the what the s4 yeah. and the gts but yeah, I don't know. I just from a, a stance and an appearance standpoint, I love the flared rear fenders on this car. I'm surprised yeah. it took them, you know, until the GTS to do that to the car. So that shifter is that the normal height for a shifter? It almost looks like a short shifter. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty. Yeah, good. it looks right to me. It looks right to you. Yeah, well, almost like a 944 ish. Yeah. yeah, man, gorgeous car. But anyway, this is. That is a that's a healthy presale estimate. And who's who has that car? Uh, this is RM Sotheby's. Sotheby's. Yeah. So the next couple of cars, um, our listeners may not have heard of this group. Uh, it's an auction house called Broad Arrow Auctions. They are new this year. This is their first big sale, but the the principles are not by any means new to the the uh, high end you know catalog sale business. Um, uh, most of them uh, came over from uh, RM Sotheby's mm -hmm. and uh, founded this company recently. So they're all people that if you've been around the auction world, they're all very familiar, very experienced people that, that you'll absolutely know. So this next car is also, to me, a swan song. This uh, swan song car of the 997 mm -hmm. GT3 RS, and this is the mighty 4-liter. Oh. This is like the goat of RSs. Oh, right. my goodness. And I'm going to go out on a limb here. This this car has a pre-sale estimate of six hundred to six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That strikes me as pretty conservative. I think that this is this is a car that is destined to be you know maybe not next week, but this car is destined to be a million dollar car at some point. I think in the in the relatively near future. I think most serious collectors or people who are building collections. Mm -hmm. Much like they're told, you have to have a 73 RS. Yeah. Also told, you have to have a 4.0 997 uh, GT3 yeah. RS. Yeah. So I think uh, for anyone who's building a collection, this is the uh, this is the one to get. Yeah. If you buy this car for six hundred to six hundred and fifty thousand dollars next week, it's going to look very well bought. I think and, fairly soon. And I know we shouldn't do this, but what was what was that car retail when it first came out? Like two fifty. No, no. So 180, maybe? 180, yeah. 180, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yep. But you couldn't get them. I mean, it was, I remember the, the run was, uh, oh. it, it was, uh, everyone wanted one as soon as it came out, yeah. but it was uh, almost impossible to get. How fortunate are we in this Porsche world that these cars, after so many years, are garnering the prices it's not even are. after so many years it's after 11 years I, I, know, mean, I, know, I know you know this used to be just a used car back you know uh 10 years ago i mean you know look at what happens with um you know like slant nose 930 turbo s's but, those cars depreciated so, into so the, this one didn't really have a dip though I mean, no this, this, the, was, this car this never depreciated right from the gate uh, right exactly and that's yeah. kind of the new phenomenon with with these very special Kind of car late internal combustion era cars. People so, realize. So speaking of that, let me let me veer off on an exit real quick here. Yeah. And you know, with electric cars coming to the market and more of them become, you know, the norm, will these ICE vehicles be even more sought after, or will they, people in the future, be repulsed by things that you know burn gas? No, I don't think so. I mean, people aren't repulsed by vinyl records. They're not repulsed by stereo amplifiers with tubes or mechanical watches. I mean, there's always going to be, I think, this fascination with, with analog technology. I mean, I did a piece in the New York Times not long ago about this, and I really do think that, you know, that this phenomenon is here to stay. The, the last and the best of the cars, the, the, the ICE era, I think, are always going to be sought after. All right, so let me take 
take go a little bit deeper into the exit because this this one was personal for me this weekend where um within 24 hours my local community had like a town meeting about loud cars in our area there was something like you know, uh, River Hill is not a uh, racetrack. Like that was the meeting, and they gave, <laughs> gave they gave us less than twenty four hours notice that this was happening, and I couldn't go, and I really wanted to, but I could tell, you know, the tone of it was, you know, loud cars are in uh, in our neighborhoods racing, like it's blah blah blah. And trust me, I I hate the people that leave their car in first gear, second gear and drive through the neighborhood with right. their with their mufflers wide open or lack thereof. But like these people almost like seem like they were out there with pitchforks and saying, you know, well, yes, they, they all gather at so and so and then they take off and race home. And I'm like, you can't lump us all together. But that's what I'm worried about. Like, I'm worried about people and ice cars that are in uh, electric cars and quiet and serene and da 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 like they're gonna come after us because we're enthusiasts well i think that there have always been loud mufflers you know people have always put glass packs on whatever this is not a new thing i think that it takes on with you know things like next door and things like that where people can get their their temperatures up a little bit higher they can commiserate you know i think those things kind but, of but what there wasn't before or at least wasn't very popular was this cars and coffee gatherings there'd be like organized car shows there would be an organizer and someone you could hold responsible for right but nowadays it's just like hey we're getting together at such and such place yeah pop-ups and and and, and they're sitting there and uh, you know they're sitting there revving their engines. I can see where right. pissing yeah. people. And, and I can too. And there's always some. There's always going to be a baseline level of dumbassery at, yeah. at you know cars and coffee or gatherings like that. It's usually the Mopar people, not to <laughs> so, <laughs> not so, to call anyone so not out. Not to go but, too far, but yeah. the, the whole reason why this popped up is because somebody in a a car was doing donuts at our local high school, and also there are groups that in Maryland they've. Um, they kind of come to an intersection and then they block off all four. It's like going ways. around the country, not yeah, just and, Maryland. And, yeah, just not just in Maryland. So it's, it's all getting lumped together, which makes me fearful. And, you know, I hate those people as well that are blocking intersections and doing unsafe things. I hate people that are doing donuts on, on private property. Like, I hate all that too. But don't lump enthusiasts with that. Just because, you know, I want to make my car a performance car or I like a better exhaust. Like, don't lump me in with... You know these hooligans, so to speak. The people who ensure that we can't have nice things. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah. all right. Back, all right. Back, well, back, let's, back, talk back. Let's, let's, let's talk about let's talk let's about talk about a super loud car that at least isn't street legal. <laughs> Man, no, 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 no. This this next car, I think, is also this is a, a this is also a broad arrow car, right? Yeah. 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 And this is like King Kong at the track. Yeah. 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 But this is interesting. So can... this is only a track car. This was right. never street legal. Right. So it, to me, it's interesting because it's a car that doesn't really have history. Other than uh, I think Jeff Short running it up uh, Pike's Peak, right? It has never raced in a series. It's you know it's not like a, uh, a GT3R that uh, Porsche races and has won Le Mans Daytona. Um, this is a car they came out with. I think they were hoping to have a series, but uh, you know once again we laughed because we said collectors are going to buy this and there's no way they're going to race them, yeah. and that's exactly what happened. So it's um, it's a very peculiar car. I thought to myself. Uh, who would buy this car? So this is a this is a GT2 RS Club Sport. So engine and transmission is just like the standard quote unquote standard GT2, um, but obviously suspension, lack of interior, carbon fiber bits. This is a, a dedicated track car. Right, but under the skin, and, and Manny, you can talk more about this. This is actually very similar to the the 935, right? Well, yeah, they based the 935 yeah. on this car. Yeah, the modern Which, day. And the 935, 35. the modern 935 isn't street legal either. Yeah. Yeah. And that also, uh, but that was a whole different body, a very attractive body. And, you know, they really uh, pushed the whole uh, uh, relationship to the original 935s. But that also didn't become a series. And once again, other than Jeff Schwart and uh, I think Cam Ingram might have driven one, I'm not sure, up uh, Pike's Peak. I never really saw it in competition. Okay. To sum this up, though, you've got a very expensive car with limited usability and a probably fairly limited market. So, um, how many people are taking them to the track? Yeah, yeah. And what's the, what's the uh, pr prediction on this car? Five hundred to five fifty. 
that almost seems like a bargain. It, d- it does to me too. That's one of the reasons why That's I, I picked bargain. this car. Yeah, factory built race car. Right. <laughs> huh. So, all right. The next car, Manny and I have felt has always was always destined to become the future RS because we were at DE's when this car, a lot of these cars were on track. And in fact, um, well, not to scare people about DE's, but uh, this car is not forgiving. And we've been at DE's where we've seen uh, this car uh, bite their owners in the hand because they uh, they couldn't handle it. I mean, this car has no ninnies. It is loud and ruckus. It's It's a great drive. Yeah, I mean, when it came out, people were who were buying them seemed to be coming from uh, either Boxsters or Turbos or regular 996s with PSM. Mm-hmm. And suddenly they were put in a car with a lot more horsepower uh, with no nannies to yeah, save them. Yeah, please at save all. me. I don't yeah, think yeah, so. No. And um, there was a, a lot of incidents on the track. Just people ran out of talent. And so this car required uh, you know, a driving skill. And uh, much like the Carrera RS. Um, you know, uh, some people may say, well, the GT3 RS is closer to the Carrera RS. And that could be argued uh, uh, because if you if you know about the Carrera RS, it wasn't a huge departure from the S. Um, uh, where this, I think, the GT3 RS version of this GT3, 996 GT3 was a pretty uh, big step up from the regular GT3. But, yeah, for a long time, this, these cars languished. They, right. Know. Well, let's talk about how smart we all are because we all bought one of these back when they were forty five, fifty, and sixty thousand dollars $60,000, right? Did he just say we? <laughs> <laughs> In fact, none, I, of us, <laughs> none of us bought one. If I had the means at the yes. time, I would have bought one of no, these he's, in a he, man, I, I mean, I'll, I'll vouch for Manny. He has said this all along. He has said this all along. When they first came out to yeah. when they started dropping in price, he's like, if I could, this is a car I would get because I know it's going to be a future RS. Well, yeah. that because you know, it reminded me of the tur- original 930s because so many people were wrecking these cars. Yeah, and I thought I used to joke. I said, uh, "You can find one unwrecked. That'll be the unicorn because um, unwrecked yeah. or untracked. I don't mind if it's tracked, yeah. uh, but the wrecking part, you know, yeah. hitting tire walls, uh, just because people once again didn't realize that this was essentially a cup car. This is back when they were still taking cup cars off the line uh, before they put the interior in." And turning them into cup cars. So, it was. so, so my car is a, a clone to this. Uh, although this is a Mark II body kit, mine's a Mark I. Um, I can tell you because I've driven uh, one of our past presidents, Kirk Gibson's. You know, he had a 996 GT3, and I was like, man, how different can that car really be from my car? <laughs> and I have a 99 C2. Um, and I can tell you it's a world of difference. It's almost like comparing a cruiser bike to a sport bike. Yeah. Like it was just, you know, the RPM is a point and shoot. And it's just like you can't drive that thing slow. Like you just want to drive fast all the time. Yeah. Is it the most comfortable? Who cares? Because it's fast and it's precise. It's like a scalpel. Um, what an amazing car. Even this is a Mark II. This is the 996 GT3 uh they came to the U.S. with the first one, and that really started um, confusing people as to what was the top dog. Was it the Turbo or was it the GT3? And that's, we, we talk about that uh, a lot uh, where people who buy who, who GT3s but are used to uh, Turbos or GTS uh, 911s, and suddenly you know, they're shocked at uh, how a GT3 rides and how firm it is. It's just not like as smooth as the previous cars, and that's, you know, a lot of that is because it's a motorsports car. Right. And you're gotta, right. You gotta you got to give up some uh, of the comfort. Yeah, because there's a lot of buyers out there that want the best, and yeah. they hear about GT3 and they think that's the best. Well, I'd but give it, up a major body part for this car. So. Yeah, but you know, people, you know, some people that are buying these things don't think about how, as Manny said, this thing doesn't ride like a turbo. It does, you know, and it's also you hear the differential, and you know, a wheel picks up when you go down a curb. I mean, it's 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 hardcore. It, it is. I mean, I just drove the the RS version of this car in Europe about a month and a half ago. Did he just rub that in our face? I think he did. And it, yes. I felt I felt like he rubbed that in our face. <laughs> <laughs> I rode in the Honda Fit. <laughs> uh, which is also lowered and a very nice suspension on it. But, uh, anyways, go ahead. Yeah, no, and, and it, it absolutely was stiff. Did I find it to be 
uh, intolerable, no, but the roads there were absolutely pristine. And, and how long was your drive? Hour. So yeah, on, on, yeah. on very, very nice roads. Yeah. I, I will, I'll, I'll give you that. But, uh, yeah, the only thing, and we, uh, for some reason, we didn't know. This car's actually for sale at Bonhams. Uh, we left that off in the article. We'll add that. But the only thing that's missing here for me if I'm going to own one of these cars, it needs to be speed yellow or maybe guards red or something like that. Uh, black, um, you know, uh, it frankly, it looks out. like your car, Vu. I know, I know. And, you know, trust me, if I had the, the chance of another color in my car, I love my car. And when it's clean, I love it. Oh, I don't, I don't but, dislike the but, black. But, but you know, I would love to have a brighter color. Yeah, speed yeah, if you're going to drive a GT car. And what yeah. this car did, which I, and I find this interesting, is no one ever talked about the headlights. You know, it's the uh, same headlights in a 996, but somehow it got a pass. Uh, well, but they, they the say GT3. it's the, the dot two headlights as, as opposed to the original fried egg headlights. But so that's interesting. That trunk right there, um, it's not a C4, but it has a C4 chassis. Yeah, I believe they use a C4 chassis yeah. or at least brake system. Yeah, because my my interior. I think they have, use a C4 chassis. I think, I think you're right. Very cool. All right. This uh, next group here, which I was. Uh, You've seen them uh, mention this quite a bit lately. Our, our friends at Meekum have a pretty special RS. And if you haven't seen that, uh, not only is it an RS, but it's Paul Walker. 73 RS. RS. Right. Yeah, and you're absolutely, if you're the buyer in this car, you're absolutely buying it for the Paul Walker co uh, connection. Yeah. Not, you know, not to buy perfectly authentic uh, two seven touring because there are some personalized touches to this car that that you know Manny and I talked about earlier, you know that aren't necessarily, you know Concord correct, but were done to, to you know because that's what he, he wanted. Exactly. Yeah, he liked it, yeah. and and frankly I like it. I think the car looks great. So how many miles are on this one? What's actually let's go back to uh, sorry before you what was the estimate on the uh, the GT three the nine nine six GT three oh one fifty to one eighty. 150 to 180 80, yeah man we could have had those back like 40 something well for yeah 40 for a, a pretty heavily tracked car but nice yeah. cars two years ago were 65 grand man okay yeah, anyways i know so what's the estimate on this uh two seven uh it's a million to a million 250 which is kind Ooh. of what the estimate would be if this were a lightweight but oh. this is a touring so essentially i think what the auction company is banking on and and i think uh uh, not unjustified is that the Paul Walker connection is basically going to elevate uh, a touring to the price of a lightweight. Mm. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the uh, Paul Walker tax is on this. Yeah, because it's uh, not a correct RS with the, some of the trim bits. Right. I mean, I think Paul wanted, you know, Paul had a touring and he wanted a lightweight. I mean, it's got the um, uh, the lightweight, the fiberglass rear bumpers, the deco trim from the bumpers isn't there. I'm trying to figure out if these are sevens and eights or eights and nines, but I mean the the wheels are wider than than they would otherwise be on a touring. I don't know what else, Manny. Did you notice? Well, the wheels I don't believe are correct. Yeah, it's more like RSR wheels. Um, yeah, well I RSR mean, finish, but I mean yeah, they just look great. wise they look great. You know, it's what I would do if it were my car. I, mean, I think you know I think, it'd be a great driver car. Yeah, you wouldn't you know, have to worry about. Uh, it being correct. Yeah. The but, seats have Pepita inserts. I mean, it's a stunningly good looking car. You don't see many in yellow. Yeah. And yeah. was it, do you think it was originally yellow? It, it was actually yellow. I, I, I learned this on the, that RS drive, uh, light yellow, uh, Helgelb or whatever the, the, the German name for the color was, was actually the third most common two seven RS color. Wow. So, yeah. I'm imagining white had to be the most popular. Yeah. White with, you blue, know, white with blue, white with, red whatever but this but, was yeah. also a second series car meaning you know the first 500 then the second 500 and then the remaining yeah uh, this is number 990 or 991 yeah. or something so yeah it's the second series car but it's it's stunningly beautiful celebrity ownership is always kind of tricky with values i kind of tend to think that if the celebrity in question is a deceased and b has a very firm, incredible connection to to you know the, the motorsports world, uh, then you know they do better. Like Steve McQueen cars, you know Paul Walker, you know if it were you know Frank Sinatra's car, or, you know or John Lennon's car, or something like that, not so much because right. these people really 
you know, weren't known to be car people. Right, right. You would so want a Frank Sinatra 50s Cadillac, wouldn't you? No doubt. Are Convertible? You Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But this is, it's a, it's a gorgeous car. It's going to be really interesting. I mean, this could turn out to be a very conservative pre-sale estimate. You know, there's just, you know, the, the, the Paul Walker mystique. Uh, there's, there's no telling what and that who, will. Who, who's consigning this one? This is Meekum. Yeah. Okay. So this car's actually going to be sold in the afternoon. I think they're the, the only uh, daytime sale. And it'll uh, be on TV, I'm sure. They're going oh, to yeah. Bonham's oh, is, yeah. Yeah, Bonham's, I think, sells during the day. But Meekum has got, like, what, like three days or four days. And Meekum is right next to Works Reunion. Right. At the so, Hyatt. At the Hyatt. Yeah. All right. So before, I thought what we might do is um, share with folks what our schedule is going to be like at Monterey Car Week. But before we get into that... I would love it if uh, our listeners would, one, give us a like, of course, uh, subscribe to the podcast, and if you have a minute or two, drop us a note, drop us a comment. We love getting comments from our listeners, so do that. Um, so where are we going to be during Monterey Car Week? Well, let's, uh, I, will, I think I get there first, right? So I land uh, on Tuesday, and then I'll be judging at the Pacific uh, Grove Car Show. I'll be doing the same thing. You'll be there you. with me? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And then on Wednesday, we're hoping to head over to the Zentrum. Manny, you want to share with folks what Zentrum is? And Oh, we hope to do a video explaining what the Zentrum is. It's basically like Porsche's headquarters uh, for the week at Monterey. It's a, um, I'm not going to say it's a mini dealership, but it, it looks like that. It looks It's a temporary building that looks like it's permanent. It's pretty impressive. And um, they're going to have a speaker series that they've advertised. They haven't yeah. said what speakers, but uh, I signed up to get the updates on it. So hopefully we can get access early and show our members, you know, what who who can't make it out to Monterey, but they have the Zentrum every year. Yeah, what a Zentrum looks like. I, the doesn't this just little? It, it's like German for center, like Porsche Center. I think it sounds like a like a you know alien planet from a bad sci-fi movie. But it's it's at the barn. Yeah. And Porsche rolls out the red carpet and brings out tons of cool stuff. Yep. I think it will have an art flair to it. There's a color color theme. theme that's going on. Yeah, it should be. So if we are able cool. to, we will record it and share with all of you. All. Otherwise, we'll sneak in and do it. Right. <laughs> we usually go through the back door <laughs> carrying a carrying a tray of food. <laughs> Would you like an appetizer, yeah, sir? Like to along there. <laughs> but I think what I'm really excited, lock cutter. What I'm really excited about on Wednesday is to get down there. Hopefully, we can get to the quail. Uh, and get a look at the GT3 RS that's debuting. That uh, I think that's if you uh, subscribe to eBreak eBreak News, uh, PCA's uh, weekly newsletter that comes out on uh, Tuesday nights, Wednesday mornings. Um, you'll see uh, it's one of the top stories. The link if you're not at Monterey, you can watch from home as they debut this new GT3 RS. So and all of its wing. It's all about the wing. The wing and the arrow. It's, yeah. It has some interesting yeah. arrow bits that. Uh, and uh, everyone's been, you know, we've been seeing spy shots of this car forever, so it's going to be cool to see uh, what uh, what it actually is. And hopefully we can get that on Wednesday, uh, get a look at it. And Rob will be previewing some previewing cars? Some of the cars that we actually just talked about. Yeah, and some that we didn't, including mm -hmm. the Sally Carrera 992, the Porsche exclusive Sally Carrera. Do, cool. you, do they have an estimate for that yet? They don't. Uh, I think that is selling Saturday at RM Sotheby's. Our good friend Jay Ward, I'm sure, will yep. be there. Very cool. Uh, looking forward to seeing that. But this is actually a drivable car. Right. Yes. This right. isn't like the original Sally. Yeah, right. It's Sally inspired. Sally inspired 992, you know, done with Porsche exclusive. And set for charity. Yep. Set for yep. charity and apparently only available to a U.S. based buyer. Interesting. So, well, it's a U.S. spec car. So. Ah, okay. All right, and then Thursday we will be setting up at uh, Monterey Pines Golf Course, getting ready for Works Reunion on Fridays. Uh, Rob will still probably be doing the auction uh, tour, and then Friday we go right into a full day of Works Reunion. Hope to see many of you there. Then on Saturday, I'm judging with rob i think yeah. lemons concord of lemons concord de lemons yeah and uh damon will <laughs> you be the shots before you go there damon will be at laguna Boosted. what's damon doing at laguna he's he's, uh, he's doing interviews or something he's like doing that. interviews okay. yeah laguna okay. Seca. 
And then Manny and I are also going later that day, heading over and uh, checking out Spike's car radio podcast. Spike's car radio, doing a live so. show with uh, the whole crew, which is Seinfeld, Zuckerman, yeah. uh, Johnny Lieberman, and of course Spike. So, uh, Are you bringing a Sharpie so Zuckerman can sign your forehead or something? <laughs> I want I want to take a picture uh, of my face next to his face with the uh, sticker. I with the sticker, to, I just want one of those stickers. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it'll be fun to see. Uh, um, they do these forums, uh, which are usually paid. But you have to pay for them, but because of this, uh, because of COVID, they said uh, right now they're free. So I yep. got his tickets; they're sold out now. And uh, nice, yeah, it should be fun. And then on Sunday, we're doing something that. Uh, Manny gave us a tip on too, and we're gonna stay. You want to talk totally. about this? No, I mean it's uh, they haven't heavily, they haven't he- heavily it's advertised. Porsche Club it. Insider, Rob. Uh, but they're okay. doing a, a hill climb at uh, Laguna Seca on Sunday. So uh, originally, um, Laguna announced there would be no r- historic racing on Sunday, so people wouldn't have to decide between the track and Pebble. But uh, uh, and I think Bruce Bruce Kenneth was uh, behind behind us. it all. Yeah. Um, and they're doing a uh, hill climb, which to me sounds so uber cool. Yeah, they're going to start from start finish backwards and run up the up corkscrew. The corkscrew yeah. I just see cars launching. I mean, I mean, I can't imagine <laughs> the view. That's going to be nothing but blue yeah. sky as you're heading up there because it's such a steep downhill. And I'm hoping you land in the up. right place. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if my nine fourteen would have enough power to make it all the way up to the uh, yeah. to the to the top of the hill, but uh, the uh, finish line would be at the uh, the top of the corkscrew and. Unlike Goodwood, where they got to parade the cars back down after they've had several run up the hill, um, here because it's the track, they can just keep on going. Oh, just uh, go around, counter race, and go back to the pits without you know stopping the. Uh, the they need to backtrack. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking yeah. for yeah. it. To they got 60 sing. cars. They said they're going to have from the motorsport reunion on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. They're going to stay over and run uh, the. The uh, hill climb. So I would love to see a 917. Oh yeah, uh, go up that hill. This actually might be the coolest new addition to Car Week, you know, that I can remember. And I think it's probably going to be about the 20th year that I've been. And so, for those of you yeah. that are wondering, we will have microphones and camera, and hopefully we'll be able to capture it. And if we do, of course, we'll share. It, it, with it you. got my attention because we were originally leaving Sunday morning early. Because quite frankly, the Pebble Beach Concourse got very expensive. Yes. $525. That's for the uh, peasant entrance. <laughs> the VIP stuff is like up to 4000 Well, What was the best experience that you and I had watching Pebble? Do you remember that? We snuck. Well, I'm well, no, no, we we, didn't, no, we didn't sneak in. Well, we, we, didn't actually did. go, we didn't go in. No, but we, we were just get, sat at the entrance. We got to the parking area by uh, alternative means. So we, got, we, we get there really early when it's dark. <laughs> And when the workers, you, you when did, the workers got there, or the Dawn Patrol people. Yeah. No, we were before no, the Dawn Patrol. Oh wow! We before, yeah. And uh, if you if you act like you belong there, they just keep on letting you through. And we got all the way to the front parking. We parked, which we don't and, recommend you to no, do. This. No, no, I don't think this you can do it. Long now. This is a long time ago. Right. Yeah. Uh, and um, we walked down behind the restaurant because we could see cars going down there. The service entrance. Yeah. And we just uh, sat on the curb and we watched the entire field go the Dom, by. The Dom Patrol came to us <laughs> Yeah, as they entered the because field. Because they were run- you heard the cars running. They would stop. They would get their packet of information and a goodie bag. And then on, on off they went. So we sat there for like two hours. Yep. Then we, uh, when it was all done, we went to the, uh, to the, goodie uh, store. To the souvenir store. Yeah. We did actually o- overpriced yes. hats and, uh, so it was, the hotel it was a very 11. limited experience, and uh, we actually had to catch a flight. So, but it was yeah. kind of cool. Now, the pro tip for getting to, to Pebble Beach on Sunday now, the parking has gotten so, you know, the remote lots are so far, and the shuttle buses and everything else. The parking garages in downtown Monterey, across from the Portola Hotel, are either free or very cheap on Sunday. Mm. Park there and just Uber over to, to the Concord. That is, that's the way to do it. That's a tip. That's a yeah. great tip. All right, so we are ooh, we're running out of time, but we want to. We have like three news items. Let's get through that. Uh, let's talk about the latest in terms of the uh, control of Volkswagen and Porsche. What's what's up there? Uh, basically, uh, you know, Jim alluded to this uh, why um, Porsche is creating the IPO and how basically the family, the Porsche and Fiat families, just want control back of the company, which they didn't have with Volkswagen's ownership and. Uh, I think it's good. It's uh, not really new news. It was in several articles. 
Uh, but uh, it's uh, if you if you know about the families, you know, of course, you know that uh, they are very much involved. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's it's interesting because I tell my son who has uh, some Tesla stock, I go, they're completely opposite of Elon Musk. Elon's a very out there in front of everyone on Twitter constantly. I said you never see anyone Oliver Bloom on Twitter or doing anything controversial. It's very quiet, and even says in an article when they were reached for comment, they didn't want to make a comment. You know, it's just, I guess, the German way. Uh, but they ha they exert a lot of control, mm -hmm. and uh, I think they want that control back. They probably lost when Weedy King uh, tried to take over VW. So. All right. Uh, the next one is, oh, this is uh, a vehicle that I saw in their, their warehouse a couple yeah. of years ago. Um, sort of the Cayenne Murano. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. Cayenne Murano. We've talked about the Murano a lot lately. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I did see an evoke convertible. <laughs> I wonder if there was like a spy that was giving Nissan some uh, I know, some right? ideas. Now, the, what what caught my eye or the, the point about that car was that was done in 2002, mm -hmm. right? And the Cayenne in the States came out as, I think we had 03, 03 Cayennes, but most Cayennes here 04, are 04. Yeah. But to think that they had that, you know, it's got the turbo so, front end. So what it has on it is, uh, is it's a two-door. That's the mm -hmm. key thing. It's mm -hmm. not a four door, mm -hmm. a two door. But yet the rear flares were longer than on the Cayenne, and they had actually taillight treatments that were more um, like a Panamera than a Cayenne. And the roof itself, the planned roof, was going to be like the uh, modern Targa top, where it would have a you know, soft section on top. And yeah. Right. This the uh, prototype uh, they showed to the world uh, in the article was um, never a mechanized top. It was just something that. They had planned if it had gone. So the uh, concept had no roof at all. It was like a beach car or something. Or I, uh, I think I read somewhere where it was all manual. Mm. But the fact that I haven't seen any pictures with the top one may say that, yeah, they didn't have it ready. But then in the at, in the end, I think their actuaries figured out that it probably was not much demand for this car. The sane people figured <laughs> out. <laughs> but, hey, what a great, what a fun exercise. I mean, it, it could have been. Uh, a car that we are anticipating is the uh, new 718 Boxster Spider RS. Will it be called an RS? So that'll be the first uh, convertible RS since, what, the uh, 718? Mm. From the 50s? I think so. I don't think there's been an I RS. There uh, hasn't an open RS. Using the RS. And what uh, are they nope. saying? This thing will have like 500 horsepower? I think it's basically, you know, like a Cayman GT4 RS. Yeah. But yes. but if that's the case, then this car will only be, and I don't say only in, in, in a negative way, but it won't come in a manual. It'll be PDK only. It, uh, it's interesting because the rooftop uh, is actually, the back of the roof extends further than on the regular 718 Spider. Oh. Now, this is all um, prototype pre-production, so they may be part of disguising. That may be actually something production-wise, but it also mounts a different... Uh, uh, if you look at the rear where the, um, let's call it the bikini top mounts. Right. Seems like it has an it's, intake or something. Yeah, it's there, it has intake, so it's oh. mounting differently than on the regular 718 yep, yep, Spider. Yep. Oh, that's wicked. Yeah. yeah. That uh, is wicked. Yeah, if you're not on the list <laughs> already, we'll just have to wait to see, uh, you know, once it comes across. That'll be exciting shores. to see uh, if that comes so, out. So we have and, a buddy that's anticipating, uh, hopefully, an allocation and... Uh, you know he's he would he would let go of his manual spider that he has now, and some of us you know in our in our buddy group is saying, man, do you really like he has a GT2 RS? Does does he, and which is PDK and the the spider that he has is a manual, and it might be one of the last great manuals. Do you give up the last great manual for another PDK car, right? Even though the RS is going to be amazing, mm -hmm. man, rough world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see what else are we're upcoming events. We talked about uh, Works Reunion, of course. Sports Car Together Day. If you haven't uh, purchased your Corral parking tickets, make sure you do that. We still have parade laps available at Indy, and that's over Labor Day weekend. Just go to pca.org, and all the details are there. The best twenty five dollars you'll ever spend. Oh my you gosh, Just yes. need a Porsche. To be able to participate, but uh, not many people can say they've driven the F1 course at Indianapolis. The normal tour takes you around the Indy course, but this is through the F1 course, so it's uh, 
yeah, pretty special. And I think if you spoke to anyone who did it last year, yeah, will tell you that uh, they would have paid a hundred dollars right. to do these uh, laps. And and this year they actually allow. I think last year you could only do one day. Yeah. This year, if you want to do three days in the same car, you can buy three days. So that's pretty cool. Nice. Uh, let's see. Unstock, November 13th. When's the date going to be announced? And the that date, date the location. We will mention the location uh, at Works Reunion. So right now, it's just save the date for November 13th. And at Works Reunion, we'll let you know where it is. It is in Burbank, uh, but we'll let you know the exact location. And we, I think we said earlier... We did the site visit. It's going to be an amazing event. Recent videos. We released the one mile review of me not driving uh, the 918 Spider, but still was an amazing experience. Drew uh, took me for a ride, and you know, I thought it was a fun review. Uh, some people were saying, you know, why don't you let Vu drive? And please remember, we did this kind of you know off the cuff. It was late. Uh, on late afternoon at parade and he wasn't planning to bring the car for a one mile review and, and uh, you know for let's say for insurance reasons we just wanted to make sure that uh, you know we didn't get into trouble there so he drove in you know I was actually fine with it because he dipped into it whereas you know I don't know if I would have wanted to do that with a with a 918 spider I probably would have but um, I thought it was a fun review we, he has some other cool cars and uh, with more planning uh, I'm sure I'll be able to drive. So don't give him too much grief that he didn't let me drive. Uh, it was a, a joint decision there. Um, Tech Tactics Live with Pirelli last week was also released as well as the uh, Podcast 21 um, with our representative from Pirelli if you haven't checked that out. But last night, I believe we dropped the video with Donald Osborne on the 911R uh, versus the, the GT3. GT3 very that's doing very well and again all of you notice a lot of content lately and i'll you know i'll say this a lot we're trying to get to that hundred thousand subscriber level on our youtube channel so each and every one of you that are listening can help make a difference and and uh just simply subscribe it's free to do so and it helps the club and it gets you know pca out there and helps the algorithms of getting our content to those that are interested in porsches all right let's see we're at Pretty much at the top of the hour. Am I missing anything else, fellas? No, I think uh, so. The next podcast uh, we'll talk about uh, um, Monterey Car Week, Works Reunion, everything we saw. So the we'll recap. Have a lot of, the recap, yes. Yeah. And then the following week we're going to have Rob back on. Uh, I guess we we'll remotely to talk about what uh, what he, what he saw from and what the, what the market is after the sales. The aftermath. You know, what, <laughs> is it uh, is it the implosion? Is it uh, nothing at all to worry about you know people still holding on to their cars it, it'll be interesting to see uh which cars sold which ones didn't all right yeah. well everyone thanks for listening if you aren't currently a pca member and you own a porsche what are you waiting for grab that vin go to pca.org and join if you're looking for your porsche check out our test drive program we'll help you find one Remember to follow our podcast Instagram page, behind the scenes photos, videos, Porsche Club Insider, all one word. Send us a message at podcast at PCA.org. If you want, please comment on uh, the YouTube podcast video as well. Until next time, stay safe and we'll catch you down the road.